Yes, it is I, your humble host, Bill Hat the Third, coming to you live from the Palatial Home Studios of Bald Spots Productions here in the beautiful city of Santa Ana, California. Joining me in studio, as per the usual, is my friend, my brother in Christ, the disembodied voice of Rudy. Hi, everybody. I love you all. Waka, waka, waka with the Lord. And joining us from a more than acceptable safe social distance through the miracle of telephony, telephony is my father, Chaplain Bill Hatch. How you doing, Pop? I'm doing very well. I'm glad this is not telepathy. No, it's not telepathy. <laughs> telephony. <laughs> but anyway, good evening, my fellow Bible inquisitors. Glad you're doing, hope you're all doing well as we are out here in Poplar Bluff. Now, when I say we're doing well out here, the fact is, is that our church family is really going through ravages of COVID again. Uh -oh. So uh, please do keep in prayer the first church of God, Poplar Bluff. Indeed. Even my two grandchildren had... Uh, had COVID. Oh, oh no, just Charlie? Yeah, just, just Charlie, Charlie, just the youngest one. Ah. But uh, already on the mend. Well, that's good. And the rest of the family seems to be working through things as well. Us hatch types tend to be pretty tough when it comes to these kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, the hatches are pretty tough. <laughs> well, we have a long road to hoe uh, tonight. A lot of a uh, lot of material to cover. We got uh, we got verses and we got supporting verses and we got commentaries and we've got this that and the other thing because we're gonna take a drive down the Romans Road. But first, I think we have time for some Rudy news. The Lord. Hi everybody. Uh, you know what? I, I, I try to listen to everything I can about God. I want to learn from about God. I want to know everything about God. But you know what? I have a problem, and I'm, I'm hoping, because I, I, I don't know if I'm alone on this. I get bad thoughts. I think about God all day, but then I might have, like, a bad word, and then God, say God. And what it is is God knows, and what I'm scared of, because I have this stupid mentality, because I used to do drugs when I was younger, and I think that affected me a lot. And I know that if you say something of an unforgivable sin, I worry about that because it pops in my head that the the unforgivable sin because my mind works evil and I don't know how why and I I just I, it's just something that I have and I don't ever want to commit that and I tell God I have nothing against you I love you Jesus I have nothing against you I love you Holy Spirit I have nothing against you I love you but I get these thoughts popped in my head and I don't know if everybody else gets it. But I get those things, and you know what? What you do is, I try to, because I talk, try to talk to God all day, every day, because I want to have conversations with Him. And please, if you're getting that, let somebody know. And if you have that, it's not only you. Sometimes it happens, and you know what? It's terrible because I don't want to, I don't want to put God down. I want to be one of the good ones for Him. I want to be a uh, somebody that can help God, or, or you know what? Even uh, just at least plant seeds. I want to be the seed man, the plant seeds. But you know what? Please, if you have things like that, don't don't think that you're the only one. And if you do, talk to your pastor. And remember, read your Bible because you cannot be misled if you read the Bible. I love you all. Waka, waka, waka with the Lord. <laughs> amen, Rudy. I got it. Absolutely, amen. Tonight's show might help a little bit with that for references for you tonight, Rudy. And being able to look at yourself on a regular basis says that everybody it does have those times of doubt wonder and concern it's that we stay faithful to the lord even during those times and say well what made me think of that because one we do it ourselves and two satan does it as well mm -hmm. tries to bring us down thinking that the Bible and God and Jesus aren't real. They are. And Romans uh, tonight will help with that. Uh, if I may. You may. We were supposed to be doing Dr. John, John Barnett's 52 Greatest Chapters. And we're doing well until tonight, that is, <laughs> when he ended up putting in not one, but four chapters of, for review. Mm -hmm. And it's chapters five, six, seven, and eight sort of the heart of the of the letter to the Romans. But that's a lot. Yes. 
So I've got some things that I, I wrote down to get us started, but that's just by way of intro because we're not just going to cover five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to look deeper at, as Bill called it, the Roman road earlier. Yep. So Paul's letter to the Romans is perhaps the most complex of all of his writings. Remember, he didn't write Revelation. That one's complex, too. But Romans is very complex. Uh, at the time of his writing, Paul had never been to Rome. And I think that's very important to realize that, hey, wait a minute, we're writing a letter to someone or some group we haven't met yet. That's pretty, pretty difficult. He also wanted, and stated in, in his letter, he wanted to use Rome as a send-off or starting point for himself to be able to go on to Spain uh, to deliver the message of Christ out there, because no one had gone out that direction that we're aware of. Uh, although there may have been a couple of faithful Jewish folks who went to Jerusalem the very year that Jesus was crucified uh, and or separately then again uh, when he ascended on high. Uh, those, were, those were the times that, I'm sorry, not when he ascended, but when the church started mm -hmm. at Pentecost. Uh, and they might have taken the word out as far as Spain but we really don't know for sure. Um, let's see. But he wanted to go on to, on to Spain from there. Little did he know how difficult a road he had in front of him when he was writing this, uh, but that's all right. Dr. Barnett wanted to focus on these four chapters as if they were one, and that could be covered in one meeting and session and that's just difficult. Yeah. And to show you how difficult is Dr. Barnett's title for the evening, Justification, Sanctification, and Eternal Access to God. <laughs> that's a mouthful, even if you're a scholar yep. who's been studying it forever. Uh, so, and you have. So with that idea, Bill and I have agreed to we focus on the message of salvation for all people uh, through faith in Jesus, which is the theme, recurring theme throughout Romans. Mm -hmm. So with that said, Bill, do you have any further intro you would like to put in? Well, uh, just, uh, just to get into, uh, into, into the Romans road. We're adding some to uh, what you may have seen in the small pamphlets, and I'm sure I have some somewhere here around the house <laughs> on the Romans Road. But we're going to look at a few of the verses indeed, and we'll start with chapter one, uh, which, yes, we did cover the last time, which is several weeks ago now. Yep. Uh, but we want chapter one and its verses 20 and 21. Just so, uh, Bill, just would so, you mind reading Just those? so people can know. The, uh, the Romans Road uh, it explains why we need salvation, how God provided salvation, how we can receive salvation, and what the results of salvation are. So you know what we're uh, what we're gonna what road what uh, territory we're gonna cover on this road. There you go. <laughs> Let's see. I have oh, so we're gonna do twenty and twenty one. Of chapter one, yes, please. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, it's better to add both of them. Okay, let me bring it up. If you think there are more, then by all nope, means. Nope. I only had 20 uh, written down, but it's okay. Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, verse, uh, chapter one, verse 20 of Romans. For ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through his workmanship, all his creation, the wonderful things that he has made, so that they who fail to believe and trust in him are without excuse and without defense. For even though they knew God as the creator, they did not honor him as God or give thanks for his wondrous creation. On the contrary, they became worthless in their thinking, godless with pointless reasonings and silly speculations, 
and their foolish heart was darkened. You know, I think I like the silly in those speculations. <laughs> uh, God has always been active in creation, and I don't just mean the first seven days, uh, as the Bible states it. I mean throughout mm -hmm. history. And Paul is speaking about the fact that God can be seen every day in creation, not just the seven days of Genesis chapter one, but every day. We can go outside and see God in this beautiful world that he has made. Yes, we can see it inside too, by the way, because we have books and pictures and information of all sorts that we can do while we're inside. But it's still important to say that we can go outside. Yep. We can go outside and look at the animals that are out there, pets in the house, certainly, but also God's creatures. And looking at a simple leaf in the sunlight and, and having the sun shine through it is an amazing point of saying, you know, how in intricate God's creation is. Now, I know that there are a lot of naysayers who believe that it's coincidence that everything has come about the way it is right now today on, oh shucks, I forgot, August the 20th, 2022. Yep. Uh, Bill? Yes, sir. Do you remember the word Google and the fact that uh, it represents a number? Yes. It is the number one with 100 zeros behind it. Yes. And that's the kind of numbers for coincidences uh, that would be required to have each an individual person. So each of our listeners, us, uh, you know, it would take a Google of such coincidences. Of course, and that would satisfy the coincidence folks. But in reality, we who are faithful and believe say, well, who started the coincidences? It's still got to uh, be God. As, I, as I've said before, I believe in coincidences. They happen all the time. But the problem is, is I don't trust coincidences. They're too convenient. <laughs> and I like the fact that we should say that coincidences are really God just wanting to be anonymous. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, uh, another line from, uh, from a, uh, a television show I've watched before uh, where the... Uh, um, where the the quote unquote God character says, when you do things right, they'll wonder if you did anything at all. And uh, and I do think uh, sometimes that definitely applies. Yep. But here we have the beginning of all of this Roman road, and that's the fact that God has made Himself available, but people have chosen to ignore Him. Yep. As the uh, psalmist says, and then says, they try to get back to Him, and they put it into the credits of other beings that don't exist. Right. Uh, Roman, I'm sorry, Greek mythology comes to mind right now. Yep. You know, that well, Zeus did all this. And then people take, well, where did Zeus come from? And they start making up more stories, uh, both back stories and forward mm -hmm. stories, which sounds like Star Wars, doesn't it? <laughs> we had, uh, cool. you know, Prequels, yes, that's it. The backstories of movies one, two, and three after three, four, four, five, you know, and six. I did four, five, and six had already been made. Yep. And then it jumps forward to seven, eight, and nine. And that everybody knows was just science fiction, but people were doing that with where did we come from? And they kept getting further and further away, uh, you know, even to the point of saying that Caesar himself was a man god. Right. Uh, the pharaohs who built great pyramids and were supposed to last forever and rule the world again from their pyramids. Of course, all the pyramids have been emptied out and there's nothing there. But that's where we're starting. 
Now, uh, do you have any boxes on this section, Bill? Uh, let's see. I did find uh, um, that the uh, the psalm, the way the psalmist put it, I, I liked it. Um, in 1912, not the year, the uh, chapter and verse. Uh, yes. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and, and the expanse of heaven is declaring the work of his hands. But, uh, um, but yeah, there's there's a lot to uh, a lot to talk about that uh, that. Um, let's see. Um, uh, um, Dr. MacArthur uh, said, talks about uh, about it. Um, let's see. Even those who have never had an opportunity to hear the gospel have received a clear witness about the existence and character of God and have suppressed it. If a person will respond to the revelation he has, even if it is solely natural revelation, God will provide some means for that person to hear the gospel. And uh, we have examples in the Bible of uh, Philip and the Ethiopian and Cornelius and Peter. Yes, indeed. Those are good examples. Yes. And God gives us today still multiple chances yep. and opportunities. But we get to say, all right, there is God, there is creation. He's been around since forever. And people try to discount it which as we will see very directly means they sin about it uh, because of trying to find it a different way. Mm -hmm. All right. I have, and I'm ready for chapter three, verse 10. Why not do 10, 11, and 12? 10, 11, and 12. Sure. Let me turn the page, so to speak. Sort of speak. I'm working from a paper one, so I can say sort of speak. Uh, as it is written and forever remains written, there is none righteous, none that meets God's standard, not even one. There is none who understands, there is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have become useless. There is none who does good, no, not one. Not even one here. Uh, worthless is how we are if we are not endeavoring to be on God's side all the time. Uh, Paul's readers didn't have to look far <clears throat> to see sin in the world. Neither do we. Uh, what they didn't comprehend was even the good folks are sinners because they were not seeking the one true God. Sorry, this is not the sound on the volume. It's me. <coughs> That's quite not all right. sure why. Um, Paul is, of course, quoting the Old Testament uh, when he talks there. It's from Psalm 14. Um, 14 1 is, They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Yep. Uh, let's see. The uh, uh, the pulpit commentary uh, uh, mentions they have they are all gone aside. The uh, the Greek the not Greek the Hebrew word hakal uh, means the totality, and the implication is that they have become filthy, sour, or rancid, like milk that's gone bad. Okay. Uh, not the most appealing way to think about it. But truthfully, everyone is born with the capacity to sin. We all do have that capacity. It's a result of being born uh, with free will. Unfortunately, we try to please ourselves and thereby sin against God. So all have sinned. And why God gave Moses the Ten Commandments to try to straighten them out some until the time was ripe. For Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we have that as, as a definite point to be able to say that everybody does sin. <clears throat> yeah. I have a particular fun Bible study that I like to do. It's It has to do with all the 316s in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And because of studying over this portion again for tonight, I do have to modify what I used to be able to say about where did 
Cain go and get his wife if God only created one or two, or the one man and one woman, which I do believe still. And I know not everybody agrees with me. But before this, I was always trying to say, well, Adam and Eve must have had daughters born to them while they were still in the garden. I can no longer say that because that would have meant there were people born inherently without sin before Adam and Eve uh, had their, strip, their trip to the apple tree. <laughs> the only thing I can say now is possibly there are other children born after the sin was committed, mm -hmm. but before Cain and Abel, so that Cain would have been marrying a sister or possibly a niece. Uh, but it's very difficult to get into that, but I do have to change it. Yep. Because we have to say there can't be birth before Adam and Eve sinned, or those folks would have been without uh, sin. Right. You know, as, as the way we presented in the Bible. Unless they also ate the fruit. Well, we know not because it's not mentioned. Right. And like I said, I just have to revise my thinking on it. And we have to realize that without some guidance, people sin. Mm -hmm. And yes, God gave the Ten Commandments and a whole lot of littler ones, too. Uh, and then the Jewish leaders put even more on on them on themselves, and we literally have to know that on. nothing. I mean, uh, yeah, literally they put more on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, smart Alec. Yes. The whole realization is is that we have to have God in our lives, and we have to be actively reaching for Him when we find out that he's the one who's been reaching down all the time. That is what sets Christianity apart from all other faith beliefs. All of those other faith beliefs are trying to reach up right. to a God. There's nothing that really shows their deities reaching down. No, this is and we have that, well, Jude Judaism and Christianity do have the point that it's God reaching down and we have to find him and reach to him. Although, uh, and although the Jews, lo and behold, that didn't work. Nope. Although the Jews don't, uh, don't accept that, uh, that God has reached down. They still try to work their way up. They are still trying to, but it was God reaching down to them with commandments and reaching right. down with promises. Right. So we have there. But uh, right. I did uh, want to mention I found uh, I found something interesting that uh, um, that of course uh, 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 Paul uh, was not alone in uh, um, in realizing uh, this that uh, um, that uh, there's nobody righteous um, I found uh, I found a short poem by a Roman satirist by the name of Juvenal. Nothing is left, nothing for future times, to add to the full catalog of crimes. The baffled sons must feed, oh, must feel the same desires and not the same, oh, and act the same mad follies as their sires. Vice has attained its zenith. Sorry, I tried to read my own bad writing. Oh. So <laughs> So yeah, so so people of the world knew that uh, that there was nobody who was good enough. Everybody was bad. Yep. That's that is true of most of those old time uh, mytho mythological beliefs of the Greeks and Romans. There was really nothing they could do to satisfy the gods. Well, the gods were not good either. Yeah, they uh, they had uh, they were sinful as well. Yes. So, it is also true in Hinduism. There are so many uh, of their. I've forgotten how many gods they have now. You, it's you not important. A Google, you mentioned a, the the number Google a while ago. 
<laughs> I don't think it's that many for the gods of the Hindus, but many of the gods of the Hindus, mm -hmm. they have cyclic returned to earth to try to change things around. Yeah. And it's not that they were always progressing better either. Some of them were progressing, degressing right. on their return trips. Um, we have God. And we know that mankind has sinned. And we know that we get redemption because we're going to look at it some more. Would you do uh, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, please? Sure. Let's see. This righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all those, Jew or Gentile, who believe and trust in him and acknowledge him as God's son. There is no distinction since all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God. Amen and amen. No distinction. No distinction between Jewish believers and the rest of the world called Gentiles regularly in Jewish writings. Sometimes referred to as Greeks. Sometimes as Greeks, some, mostly as Gentiles. Uh, there's no difference between us. We're all the same human beings. We've all descended from Adam and Eve. We, we have our producer coming I'm here. Not, I'm trying not to interrupt. Oh, all right. You're interrupting. But anyway. <laughs> uh, all peoples of the world uh, can find God through Jesus. And it has to be accepting of Jesus being the Son of God and Savior of the world. But Paul here is saying it's all of us. We all have the opportunity. There is no difference whether you, uh, no, no matter how you're brought up, whatever situation you're in, it's faith in Jesus. And so we rejoice in that without any doubt. Do you have any boxes on this section, Bill? Uh, oh, uh, found Ecclesiastes 7.20. Indeed, there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's not a new idea on Paul's part. No, not at all. Uh, was it the Greek philosopher Sosthenes who went looking for oh, was uh, it an honest man carrying the lantern at night? I think so. I want to say that's the correct name for it. So we even have it from... Greek, and that's not mythology, that's right. uh, more of the psychology of things, of people, real philosophies anyway, trying to find a righteous person. And the truth is, is that we cannot find it without. What I find interesting, and just a note off the top no, of my Sosthenes, head, is, uh, was the chief ruler of the synagogue at Corinth. Oh, okay. So I was mistaken on the name. I don't believe that's who it was who was uh, carrying the lantern, but that's all right. Now, I almost lost what Sorry. small train I was on, or rabbit trail, as it were. <laughs> Even the book of Job, which is long before it considered to be parallel with Abraham, uh, he talks about the need of someone to intercede for him. It's that he was looking for Jesus already. And I just love that point. Uh, in the letter, I'm sorry, the book of Esther in the Old Testament, God is never mentioned. Mm -hmm. But there's a real hint about, about needing God's son, the Messiah. What happens is Mordecai, the uncle of Esther who raised her, and when the Jews are to be put to death by uh, Haman, mm -hmm. Mordecai tells Esther, who knows that it isn't you that has been brought to this position, but if you don't act, someone else will. 
again, it's the searching for the Messiah, right. the Savior. And so I think we can see that in that book as well. Now, those are both rabbit trails, and I need to get off of them quickly. Okay, uh, real, <laughs> real really... quick to, to end the one rabbit trail, uh, Diag Diogenes of Sinope. Diogenes, Diogenes, thank you. Yes, rejected the concept of manners as a lie and advocated complete truthfulness at all times and under any circumstance. Okay. But it is such a blessing to know that it's all people, not just the Jewish people. Right. Yes, God started with them. Yes, they have a special place in his heart. And the book of or letter of Revelation talks about the fact that God's going to still be doing something with them. We don't have to fully understand it, right. but it's not to the exclusion of any other folks. We are there and we are blessed. Okay, yeah. chapter five. Chapter five. I want to read two different verses. They're separated by a few. Okay. But it's chapter 5, verse 8. God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then again, uh, well, no, that's, that's enough on that part. We really have to look at it because okay, we know. didn't deserve it. The world did not deserve to have Christ come. We were sinful. We were totally out of balance and out of line and headed straight to hell. Right. I have uh, when, I have five eight in the next section. <laughs> I don't think I understand. I have it divided into sections like uh, the consequences and the the problem and the solution and okay. yeah. Yep, that's why I haven't read 12 yet. Right. I realized that I didn't, uh, my notes are hard to read too. I know, I spent the last two hours trying to mm. rewrite my notes. <laughs> uh, but being able to say that Christ came while we were sinners mm. because it wasn't in response to anything that any group of people were doing, Jews or Gentiles wasn't anything they were doing right so they came right it was while we were still sinners mm -hmm. now do you have a box on verse 5 8 i do i have some some notes here um please let's see uh, of course uh, i wrote down john three sixteen, knowing that uh, that i didn't have to write down the verse <laughs> but uh um but yeah, um, let's see, John 15, 13, no one has greater love nor stronger commitment uh, than to lay down his own life for his friends. And 1 John 3, 16, uh, part A, talking about 3, 16s, uh, by this we know and have come to understand the depth and essence of his precious love that he willingly laid down his life for us because he loved us. The, uh, the pulpit commentary said something interesting, uh, or that I found interesting. Um, Christ laid down his own life to benefit his enemies, those who hated him. And uh, reminded me of uh, um, somebody had kind of paraphrased uh, John 3.16 to say, uh, For God so loved the world that hated him, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but, ever, but have everlasting. Hmm. Pretty, pretty relevant to look at and say, yeah, the world did mm -hmm. hate God and Jesus. Yeah. Because it looks like it's taking away all of our freedoms. We don't, we want to do what we want to do. Right. And God says differently. Mm -hmm. We have all the freedom in the world that we need, but it, we should be recognizing who gave us that freedom and how we should be properly responding. Right. So yeah, I like it. Verse 12 is a verse that talks about truth of all things. Sin entered the world through one man, through Adam. It was Eve first, but it's one man, Adam. Uh, and death through sin. Before they took the bites of the apple. There was no human death. 
maybe no animal death, we just don't know. But certainly for mankind, no death before that. Uh, and that death spread, has spread through ever since then. Mm -hmm. We have countless years in the Old Testament, which I faithfully believe, of ages of all the folks listed in, well, the book of Genesis primarily, probably some of them in Chronicles, but I don't want to go there. Uh, it's to say that if they hadn't sinned, the world would probably be much smaller <laughs> and they would, you know, we might even still be seeing Adam and Eve. Which is, you know, a mind boggling idea. Uh, just can't envision it, but it's still a possibility because there was not death before that. But sure enough, it resulted with the bite of the apple. And I'm sorry, the bite of the fruit. We keep blaming the poor apple. Yeah. And there's nowhere in the scriptures that it says it was an apple. Right. But it's symbolic. Uh, and uh, not to mention that the apple they probably would have had at the time would have been a crab apple anyway. Because uh, the apples we eat today are uh, um, are bread. They're the result yes, of they human have intervention. Yep, they keep coming up with new names every few years, yep. too. So I'm uh, still very fond of the ga galas, <laughs> but there are many others. I'm a Granny Smith man myself. You're a green apple person? I'm a green apple person. Sure as God see, made there you green go. apples. I guess the apple fell far from the tree on this generation. <laughs> all right. Uh, all fun aside. Yes. But death is around and it feeds on, death feeds on sin. And if people don't have faith in life after death, their fear of sin is steep. Yes. They're absolutely concerned with it. They don't know what they're going to possibly do. Yeah. So with that in mind. Uh, there was a note uh, in uh, Dr. MacArthur's uh, study Bible um, that uh, I thought was uh, important to note um, that it's not that it was a particular sin. Um, eating the eating the fruit was not Eating the fruit, as Dr. Lecter might have said, was incidental um, to it. It was uh, uh -huh. it was uh, that it was the inherent propensity to sin that entered the human realm. Men became sinners by nature, and that the the particular sin uh, was not uh, was not that important, but rather that they sinned. That they sinned. I suppose we could get that much further refined. Yeah. But to be able to say that God said, you can do all these things, but don't do that. And they did that. Right. Whatever that happened to be. Yeah. And that happened to be the easily translated or shown in a visual storyline of being a garden and a tree with a tree, a fruit tree in the middle. Mm -hmm. That needed to uh, yes, tasty fruit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I can't seem to ever get the the alarm to shut off for the show. It keeps coming on. <laughs> I pull down on it. I push up on it, and it just keeps repeating. That's funny. Uh, well, we can't hear it. Oh, I'm glad. Can we go to six twenty three? Yes, we can. Now I have six twenty three divided in twain. Because uh, because it is also it is both consequent it but contains both consequence and solution. Okay. And uh, and I thought that was important. All right, take take the lead because I like okay. it. Okay. Well, six twenty three part A, as we might say, is for the wages of sin is death. Um. And uh, I've got a couple uh, supporting verses for that. Uh, Proverbs eleven nineteen part B. He who pursues evil attains his own death. And James one fifteen. When the illicit desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin has run its course, it gives birth to death. 
Uh, Ellicott uh, put it pretty uh, pretty well. Uh, the one effect of sin must be death, as the work of poison on the body. There are antidotes for both, but they must be given in time. And then uh, Jesus mm. himself said in Matthew uh, 25, 46, also part A, uh, unbelieving people will go away into eternal unending punishment. And uh, Ellicott notes uh, that uh, the Greek for eternal unending is the same in both parts. So uh, there was a question we had on a previous show about whether or not uh, um, damnation was eternal. And apparently the Greek uh, uh, in, uh, in 2546 is the same for both eternal punishment and eternal uh, damnation. Or e eternal punishment and eternal life. Okay. So it'll last just as long as eternal life it lasts, apparently. Sounds sounds right. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's what we were thinking. At least I think that's what we were yes. thinking. I think so too. <laughs> it's I I remember saying that I personally hoped that it really wasn't for eternity. I would hope that somehow it would just uh die away somewhat like a log on a fire. Right. You know, that it lasts until there's nothing else left to burn. I don't know how that will be. I don't think I'll ever find out the answer to that one because it's not what we worry about right. as Christians because we know that we have eternal life. Yep. Of course, we have no concept of what eternity is either. Uh Amazing grace, and when we've been there 10,000 years, I don't think that's even right. <laughs> I can't envision what 10,000 years would be like, but we have eternity. Yep, I don't, I don't uh, think we'll have years, I think we'll no. uh, exist in a, in a somewhat timeless state because that's the state God lives in. Because He, created I believe God. you're right. Uh, I believe that is as good as a descriptive idea. But people who do not have faith for eternal life have death. Yeah. They didn't think about anything happening after their time on earth was done. So they were mm -hmm. acting like uh, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. Right. And that is actually in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and from Ecclesiastes, which you touched on earlier. Yeah. But to be able to say the wages of sin is death, yes. Now give us side B. Side B, we're in the solution. The free gift of God, that is his remarkable, overwhelming gift of grace to believers, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And of course, the second half of, uh, of Matthew 25, 46, which is from our Lord, those who are righteous and in right standing with God will go by his remarkable grace into eternal unending life. Through Jesus. Through Jesus. Through him. Through him. He might have said through me. And <laughs> it is such a blessing to see this, but it's also very a uh, very reality check. Mm -hmm. It's not through any of the Hindu gods. Mm -hmm. Three hundred and thirty thousand. Okay, that's how many it is. That's quite a few uh, that are literally known for to be Hindu deities. Can't be any of those. Can't be Allah. Nope. It cannot be Buddha, who's not a god at all. Right. Uh, but we won't get into that. Nope. Let's see. It's not through our ancestor worship, nope. Shintoism, like in Japan. And yes, with the right books, I could keep going on. And oh, yeah. Don't forget our Norse ones, because oh, yeah. we can't forget Mighty Thor, uh, Thor and, <clears throat> and Odin and whatnot. None of those. It's only faith in Jesus. Right. And with our faith in Jesus... We have all things for eternity in front of us. Amen okay. Amen. How are we doing on time, Bill? Uh, let's see. I was just about to look at that. Uh, let's see. We're at about 45 minutes. Okay. We're, we're good. We are now going to, if you would all please, look at 
Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Romans 8. I had us go into Romans 10 next. Oh, okay. You know what? I skipped over it. Huh? You want to do 10 first? Sure. Hold on a second. Let me okay. turn my pages back. Why did I do that? Because it's, I think it's next in order. There, our, our Romans road winds a little bit. <laughs> True enough. Okay, let's see. I've got Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes in Christ as Savior, resulting in his justification, that is, being made righteous, being freed of the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God, and with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. Yeah. But you jumped to chapter 10, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. I went from 623b, yeah. the solution, to the response. I had done, uh, ch I said chapter 8, 38, and 39, uh -huh. but that's all right. We can do I this. I end with 38 and 39. <laughs> my, my Romans road winds. Your winding I, part mine goes does around. quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. That, ex that explains long part and of it. winding Lucy. road. And yet it doesn't have to be, but okay. Uh, <laughs> what kind of notes do you have on, on 10? Nine and ten. Well, uh, I've got Matthew ten thirty two. Uh, again, we're back to the words of uh, of Christ Himself: "The one who confesses okay. and acknowledges Me before men as Lord and Savior, affirming a state of oneness with Me, that one I will also confess and acknowledge before My Father who is in heaven." And then, uh, and then I found an interesting yeah. note in the pulpit commentary. He who suffers with Christ is only receiving such treatment as he ought to expect and is never forgotten. To it we all say amen and amen. Indeed. Uh, let's... It's a matter of confessing yes. that Jesus is Lord yes. and Savior. And Jesus did promise and... us suffering for that. Yep. But uh, Acts 2.24 uh, God raised him up, releasing him and bringing an end to the agony of death, since it was impossible for him to be held in death's power. And another interesting note from the pulpit commentary, that it's not actually agony, but a cord, a fowler's snare, which makes more sense when you think about that it's being held, that he's being held. And you hmm. don't really get held in agony. You get held by a cord. And so that's what the Greek probably is referring to. Okay. So the, the construction of the sentence tells us what it means. <laughs> but this passage also says it has to be more than lip service. Yes. We have to be able to say that we do believe in our hearts mm -hmm. that Jesus is is God's son, our Lord and Savior. So yeah, we can have the winding road on yeah. that bill because now we know to go back to 839 well, uh, and 38. Yeah, you, you mentioned that it's not a simple acknowledgement because uh, of God's place in the universe because even uh, yeah. even the demons say this, and know this, and shudder. And... Uh, um, yeah, it's uh, it's something without reservation, with a deep personal conviction, and uh, let's see, what else did MacArthur say? Where did it go? Where? See, this is where my notes kind of tra trailed off. Uh, let's see, repenting from sin, trusting in Jesus for salvation. This is the volitional element of faith. Uh, let's see, Christ's resurrection was the supreme validation of his ministry. Belief in it is necessary for salvation because it 
prove that Christ is who he claimed to be and that the Father accepted his sacrifice in the place of sinners. Without the resurrection, there is no salvation. Amen and amen. Yes. And it also gives good uh, awareness, rather more of an awareness, when we look through the Gospels when Jesus confronts demons. Mm -hmm. They not only know who he is, but they know that their eternal damnation is still in front of them. Uh, and they accept that fact that it's going to happen. They certainly didn't want to have, have it happen when Jesus was there at that time. Yep. Oh, uh, there is knowledge in hell about the end times. Yes. And we know that Satan knows scriptures, but he doesn't understand them. Correct. And so we have to say, wow, thank you, God, for loving us. Yep. So um, I think we're going to be finishing up with oh, the passages in okay. chapter eight. What do you think? Uh, sure. Hold on. Let me let me bring up my notes for bring up my notes like they're on the computer. <laughs> That's Romans eight thirty eight and thirty nine, 38 folks. 39. By all means, turn to them and look. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm. Paul's doing a very good job here of interlacing earthly things and heavenly things. And he's stay, saying, absolutely, yeah. I believe this. I'm persuaded that nothing can separate us if we keep Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And uh, there, there, there is some poetry to, uh, you know, to Paul uh, doing this because it's not all uh, it's not all literal uh, uh, things. There are meanings here. In uh, in eight thirty eight and thirty nine, um, powers can actually refer to miracles or people in authority. Um, yep. And uh, and of course, miracles can't separate us from uh, from God. Of course, no. God is where miracles come from. Um, height and depth are astronomical terms referring to the high and low points of a star's path and may be referring to the highs and lows of life. Possibly, Paul is referring to, uh, to the ups and downs, to the top and bottom of space itself, that, uh, that God's kingdom encompasses all of this, not just some little spot on the earth, not just the whole of the earth, but even out into uh, whatever space might have been considered by Paul. Um, Yes. He was very well educated, but uh, but their education had limits compared to us. And he didn't know no. his audience. Nope. But, uh, uh, but yeah, it's uh, I, I've always I've always kind of liked that the uh, the eight eight thirty uh, eight thirty eight thirty nine, um, and uh, and always wondered how much more it uh, it may mean than what it's actually saying because I've always thought of it as kind of sound sounding a little poetical. Uh oh, sorry. I I'm here oh, still. Okay. Can you see me? <laughs> yes, I can see you. No, I can't see you. Sorry. You can't see me. Sorry about that. I see your BH. Come on. There you, there are. you go. Sorry about that. That's okay. But uh, uh, but yeah, there's a lot more to the Romans Road, and uh, I may have to uh, I may have to uh, to finish writing out my notes for it and uh, and and publishing it online or something. So that people can uh, can see it, um, we'll put out a we'll we'll put out a simple Romans Road, so that you can uh, um, so you can see it and have it handy in the back of your mind for uh, for whenever uh, you meet. Ah, bug flew in my mouth. Devil doesn't want me to talk. He's throwing bugs at me. Okay. Um, but uh, um, so whenever you meet uh, an unbeliever, um, or uh, or a new Christian. Or, uh, or even uh, uh, an established Christian who uh, 
who might uh, not be uh, entirely certain about uh, about where his or her life is going. Um, yeah. You know, the simple one, simple is always best, but uh, uh, but complex can be uh, can be fun too. Yep. So we'll put both out. Okay. And uh, I got some things written down that I want to close with. Sweet. Now I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, in Romans, mm -hmm. Paul states and restates and says it again: salvation comes from God through Jesus alone. Mm -hmm. Over and over again. Paul preaches, I'm sorry, many preachers and pastors today still use this style. I don't like it that well. I prefer the style that the angel showed to the shepherds the night Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The angel said the message once. The heavenly host joined together for the spoken word of glory to God on the highest and peace on earth. Uh, and then they left. I like that kind of sermon approach rather than the 7-Eleven variety. I don't like the 7-Eleven variety with hymns either, you know, where you say the same seven words 11 times. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, you know, just over and over again. I don't believe that we are of an age that needs it done quite that way in preaching style now. Mm -hmm. Certainly back then, and as we've pointed out, Paul didn't know his Roman audience, right. so he was doing it over and over. But we can see this one theme throughout. Everybody sinned. God allowed Jesus to be our salvation point. And as long as we have faith in him, we are good to go for eternity. Yes. We get past all the fear of death because Jesus did all that for us. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, where was the where was my note on this thing? Uh, three oh, 324. Oh, 324. There it is. Um, let's see. Romans 320. Yeah, 323. We did that. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And uh, I did want to mention 24 because it usually gets left out. Um, let's see. Uh, believers are being justified, declared free of the guilt of sin, made acceptable to God, and granted eternal life as a gift by his precious, undeserved grace through the redemption, the payment for our sin, which is provided in Christ Jesus. It is a gift of grace it from God. A gift of grace. Nothing that we can do on our own aside from having faith in Jesus. Right. We may do, and hopefully we do good things as a reaction mm -hmm. response to our faith in God and Jesus, but it's not actually a requirement to get in. Right. Nope. Because there's nothing we can do to get in. There's nothing we can do to keep ourselves in. There's nothing we can do to get ourselves back in. <laughs> God's done it all. all right. Yes, indeed. And, okay. Uh, well, except for one minor little thing, which if you've come this far with us, gentle inquisitors, perhaps you will come a little bit further with us to do. And that is to say what we call the sinner's prayer. We, uh, we say a few simple words. It's not a magical spell or a mystical ceremony. And it uh, doesn't require any sacrifices uh, on, uh, on our part because that's already been done. And uh, really, these words mm -hmm. are just designed to align your heart with that of the Lord's. And, uh, and that's pretty darned important. Because, uh, because we want that justification to come our way. And uh, and our sanctification to come our way, and all the other good stuff that theologians talk about. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, so I invite you uh, now to uh, whether you've been a believer uh, for a second or a century, for indeed, as we said earlier, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Continually fall short of the glory of God. I liked uh, I liked that addition in the Amplified. Continually fall. Um, because it's true, we do. 
and because uh, um, none of us are perfect, and so uh, we need to keep uh, keep repenting, keep uh, getting that justification, and uh, and keep on that uh, keep on that road to uh, to salvation, eternal salvation. Oh, pardon. So if you'll join us now as we say uh, the sinner's prayer together, um, we'll do it uh, just like that. Dear Lord. Dear Lord, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Cleanse me of my wickedness. Cleanse me of my wickedness. Show me how to love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Show me how to love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And teach me how to love my neighbor as myself. Teach me how to love my neighbor as myself. Um, guide my steps along the path you would have me take. Guide my steps along the path you would have me take. And help me to do the work you would have me do for the building of your kingdom. Help me to do the work you would have me do for your kingdom. Come into my heart and be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Remain in my heart and be my Savior. And All these things we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All these things and more we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen, indeed. And since this is this is Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yes, it that is. That means the next step on your on your Romans road, your personal road, will be uh, to uh, go to church in the morning. You've uh, you've got a few hours here to Google search a Bible believing church in your area, and. Uh, uh, and you can head over there and fellowship with uh, with other Christians and find out the next steps you have to take. See, it's like a little, uh, it's like a little. Uh, oh, what were those things you used to? We used to have a scavenger hunt, where uh, where you'd go from uh, from one place to another, and each one would have a clue as to the next place that you'd had to go to, and and uh, and all that. It's a lot like that. But, okay. Uh, um, so uh, so hopefully you'll have a lot of fun doing it, but uh, that is not a prerequisite. Because, um, like we said earlier, Jesus promises suffering, so try to try to enjoy it as best you can. Uh, <laughs> because we're on the road to heaven, not uh, not to the next good time. We're to the ne to the eternal good time. Now, this isn't the only program we have over the course of the week. In fact, uh, we have a couple. I have a couple that I do. Uh, let's see. On Tuesday, you can join us once again for. YWL Online's Totally Approachable Bible Study for All, where we will be continuing our journey through the Psalter, uh, the Book of Psalms. Oh, darn it. Signal change, so the size of your picture changed. And I'm fiddling with okay. it while I'm talking. Um, we uh, just did 49 and 50. We spent a lot of time on 49 and 50. It was a great Bible study. So if you missed it, be sure to scroll on down until you find uh, find the uh, the one for uh, for last Tuesday, and uh, um, and watch or listen to it, or both, and uh, mm -hmm. and then on uh, <laughs> and then on this coming Tuesday, um, we'll be doing starting with uh, Psalm fifty one, and uh, we'll probably get through about five. So uh, if you want to participate in the conversation, and even if you're not feeling like it. Go ahead and read uh, Psalms 51 through 56, 55. That'll get about five there. That'll get about five done. All right. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. I caught a fish alive. Oh, wait. Uh, sorry. It's an old children's poem. Um, and, then, uh, and then on Thursday, I will be uh, doing my uh, weekly mini roundtable. Uh, this week, uh, it's uh, well, it's called Not Quite After Midnight. It's always called Not Quite After Midnight. But this week, um, it's funny. Um, I don't tell people who they're getting paired up with, and I don't decide. They decide randomly. And uh, so a person picks their date, and then the other person picks their date. And if they happen to pick the same date, then so be it. You're going to be on on the same day. And we'll find that out the week before. Well, this week we have, let's see, George, Dr. George and Vanessa Noun 
and oh darn it uh her last name's Hudson what was her what was her first name where's my calendar go oh there it is Dorothy Dorothy Hudson well, it turns out that Dr. George and Vanessa Noun are therapists. They are they are marriage therapists uh, specializing in uh, in physician marriages. Dorothy Husson is an LMFT, <laughs> a licensed marriage and family therapist, who specializes. She specializes in uh, um, in uh, past trauma um, and uh, and abuse recovery and uh, and such things. But uh, I found it interesting when I found out that uh, that uh, I was going to have not two but three therapists on the show all at one time, and because uh, because uh, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor and Mrs. Naum are coming on uh, as a couple, and so uh, so it'll also be interesting in that we'll have three people on the show all at once. But uh, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's going to be on on Thursday evening, and should be interesting. Uh, last week's show was uh, rather interesting too. We talked about personal responsibility and uh, and community and uh, um, and uh, making the world a better place. And uh, we'll probably do some more of the same this coming week, but in different ways. Then uh, a week from tonight will be uh, Saturday, and we'll have another episode of uh, YWL Online's Anything Can Happen Saturday. And we will be talk. We will be continuing our uh, our search through Dr. John Barnett's uh, fifty two greatest chapters of the Bible, and this will be an actual one chapter deal. First Corinthians oh. three, titled Rewards. So uh, so we'll see. Um, as a oh yeah, I forgot to ask. As a uh, as a group of chapters. <laughs> As a really wide shot, <laughs> were uh, were Romans five through eight and the Romans Road uh, one of the greatest chapters of the uh, of the Bible? It's certainly one of the greatest themes, but there was so much in four chapters that it just would not have worked. Probably wouldn't have honestly worked in two sessions. Yeah. Would have taken more than that. Yeah. So yeah, there's that that slight hindrance for the for the theological but, take on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's still amazing stuff. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think with putting four chapters in at once, that's kind of cheating because because uh, if you shoot uh, shoot a wide enough swath, you're bound to hit something great. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. And he did that for sure. He did indeed. Um, yeah, I like the Romans Road, and I really enjoyed researching it. And I hope uh, I hope our listeners enjoyed uh, enjoyed, or our inquisitors uh, enjoyed uh, watching and listening it to it. Amen to that. So, uh, oh, Rudy, uh, Rudy left the room. So uh, I will ask you: Do you have anything to say to the nice people? Just want to wish you all God's blessing from Poplar Bluff, Missouri. God's blessings and good night from Santa Ana, California. Remember to stay safe out there, wash your hands, and uh, stay tuned for the ending credits, which I will be narrating. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been a presentation of Bald Spots Productions. I'd like to thank uh, my producer, my beloved mother, Eileen Hatch. I, of course, am your humble host. I'd like to thank my co-host, my father, Chaplain Bill Hatch, and my Ed McMahon, Rudy Corlew. If you feel so led, head over to Patreon and support the show. It's at Bald Spots Pro. Uh, you can also find Bald Spots Productions on uh, Facebook. Don't miss Not Quite After Midnight. Uh, you can find it on Facebook and wherever fine podcasts are provided. Uh, please like, comment, share, uh Follow uh, whatever it takes to stay informed and uh, get involved in the community um, so that uh, we can reach more people. Thanks again, and I hope you're having a wonderful uh, whenever. Bye.